In this video, I'll show how to test an email campaign in MailWiz, then send out a campaign, and check its statistics. I'm logged into my MailWiz customer account, and I'll choose Campaigns, All Campaigns, to see the campaigns I've created. Let's say my summer sale campaign is ready to be sent, and I'm sending it to my list called Purchasers. But before sending out any campaign, whether a regular or autoresponder campaign, it's a good idea to test the email for its ability to pass through spam filters. I can use the Mail Tester site for this. I've set up a test subscriber list called Tester. I'll choose Lists, Lists to find this list, and I'll click its name to see its details. This list has five subscribers, all with the mail-tester.com domain. And I've set all of these subscribers as confirmed. Going back to Campaigns, I want to create a copy of the Summer Sale campaign to use as my test. I'll click the Copy icon, name it Summer Sale Test, and change its list to Tester. I'll go through the remaining steps, clicking Save and Next, not making any changes. Then, after the last step, I'll click Send Campaign. Immediately after sending, the status is listed as Pending. It can take MailWiz a few minutes to send an entire campaign particularly if the number of subscribers on the list is large. The recommended cron job for sending a campaign is per minute, so I shouldn't have to wait too long. After refreshing a few times, the status is now listed as sent. After sending, I can check to see how the spam test went. I'll check the website mail-tester.com slash any of the email usernames. In this case, I'm checking as subscriber web mailwizrocks 3 This email gets a pretty good spam score, 9.5 out of 10. I can click here to see exactly what this subscriber received. Here I can see some suggestions for how to improve the email, and I see that the message is safe, I'm not blacklisted, and there are no broken links. If your email gets a low score, check the messages with red or yellow alerts to see what can be improved. I'll do the same check for the address MailWizRocks2, so now there are two test subscribers who have opened the campaign. Once the spam test has been completed, after making any fixes, I would then send out the actual campaign, which I'll demonstrate at the end of this video. But I'll demonstrate campaign statistics with the Summer Sale Test campaign. After a campaign has been sent, in MailWiz I can refresh and view at a glance how many opens, clicked links, bounces, and unsubscribes the campaign got. This open rate of 40% came from my mail tester test. This was the equivalent of two of the five subscribers opening the email. Mail tester also tests links, so I have a click rate of 40%. To dive deeper into this campaign statistics, I can click the overview icon or click the campaign's name or unique ID. At the top is the campaign overview, showing some basic statistics including start, finish, and last open. If the campaign is still in the process of sending, I can click refresh to update the data. The number of email recipients is here, and this number is clickable. Now I can see all of the email addresses that received this campaign, whether the email arrived successfully, and the date and time when the email was sent. For each of these emails, I can click its eye icon to see the exact email the address received open in a separate browser tab. I can also click the pencil icon to make changes to the subscriber, or I can click here to delete the subscriber. I'll click here to return to the campaign overview. Under details, I can see who the campaign came from, who it was sent to, including any tags I used. I can click here to view the email in a separate browser tab and see how many forwards or abuse reports the campaign received. Each of these numbers can be clicked to see more details. Clicking the number of forwards shows who sent and received forwards, and clicking the abuse reports number shows who submitted a complaint and for what reason. Date added is when the campaign was created, here is when it was sent, and the total delivery time, which in this case is just one second because it only went to my five tester email addresses. Next comes tracking stats. As we saw before, the opens came from my mail tester checks, and I can click the number to see which subscribers opened. 
The same applies to the clicks. I can also see how many subscribers chose to unsubscribe, how many complained, and how many emails bounced. And each of these numbers can be clicked for more details. I can click Export Basic Stats to download this data in a CSV file. This table below expands on these numbers. Click rates are presented for unique and total clicks. Clicks to open shows how many of those who opened the email clicked the links, and click through rate is a percent of total clicks to total sends. Open rates are shown for unique and total opens. Bounce rate breaks down emails that didn't arrive. Hard bounces reflect email addresses that don't actually exist, and soft bounces include vacation or other autoresponders. Internal bounces reflect any sending error on the part of MailWiz, such as an SMTP error. At the bottom, I have my unsubscribe and complaints rates. After this comes two tables, the first showing the number of clicks and opens for the first 24 hours after sending. I can hover over any point in this table for an exact number. The second shows the top domains for all opens and clicks. Top clicked links shows the link with the most clicks, and I can click View All Clicks, which opens its own report, showing every link and how often it was clicked. From here, I can go back to the campaign overview, move to the top clicks or latest clicks, or export this report. I can use the back arrow to return to the top clicked links, where I also have a link to View Top Clicks. This report has the same options as the All Clicks report. Similarly to Top Clicked Links, I can view a summary of Latest Clicked Links or click here for more detailed reports. Here I have a summary of my latest opens, showing the email addresses of the most recent subscribers to open the campaign. As before, I can click here to view a more detailed summary, including unique opens. And finally, I have a summary of subscribers with the most opens, Again, with a link to a more detailed summary. With all statistic checks, keep in mind that incoming data is cached, and updates may not be immediate. Refreshing the page will bring up the most recent stats. Finally, I can share my campaign stats with other people. At the top of the campaign overview page, this icon brings up the sharing options. While statistic sharing is enabled, anyone with this link can access the statistics. I can turn this off to keep the statistics hidden. I can also choose to hide or show subscriber email addresses. There is a default password provided, which I can replace with another password if I want. To give others access to these statistics, I can copy this URL and distribute it, or enter the email addresses of the people I want to share the statistics with, and an email containing the URL will be sent to these addresses. To demonstrate, I'll copy this URL and click Save Changes. Then I'll open a new browser tab and paste it in. I need to enter the password, then the statistics are presented. In this example, these are masked email addresses. Finally, once I've used MailTester to verify that the campaign is OK to send out, I can go back to my list of campaigns, delete the test run if I like, then open the original campaign, proceed through the campaign steps, and send the campaign out. Once sent, I can check those campaign statistics as they come in.